Great, right, thanks a lot, Han. Um, I think you touched upon a really interesting point uh, by mentioning orexigen and vivis. Yeah. I think yeah, uh, yeah. in terms of obesity drugs in development right now, what's interesting is both these companies um, have decided, I mean, they, they conducted licensing deals with large pharma, um, I believe one of them with a Japanese pharmaceutical firm. I guess in terms of the advantages of partnering, uh, licensing versus m and I guess what advice uh, do you have uh, for companies out there? And I guess if you, you know, if you choose to actually conduct a licensing deal early on, does that in any way sort of impact, I guess, how attractive you are as an exit candidate for large pharma? Would you like I to guess, uh, an answer that? <coughs> <laughs> or I, I guess G-Day, if uh, you ahead, wanted I'll to. I'll follow you. Um, <clears throat> well, um, I, you know, I, I, I think you, um, again, companies that we deal with, you, you do what you have to do to raise money. And so you think about early partnering versus late partnering. There's no doubt, and I think we can discuss the pros and cons of partnering versus M&A um, in, a, in a corporate strategy. But, but uh, clearly, um, and again, and I think it's, it's a jungle. I think the capital markets are sort of a jungle mentality. Uh, you have to, you do what you have to do. So I, I think you you obviously give up a lot when you partner early. Um, if you're a therapeutics company with a with a uh, pipeline, you've obviously got more degrees of freedom to partner some of your non-core or less core assets and still have um, uh, your own programs that can, where you can drive value. Um, if you're a platform company, it's a slightly different situation. Um, but again, um, I mean, there, there are examples of companies that have raised hundreds of millions of dollars through early partnering. Um, and uh, there have been transactions that have been announced over the last couple of weeks with even early stage companies in the antibody space, for example. Um, F-Star is a good example. Um, so, I get very close. <laughs> Has anybody heard anything I've said? Because <laughs> I'll, I'll go back and say everything again. Um, so, but now I'm flustered because I didn't know I, I can hear my own voice. So, um, so yeah, I think I mean I think there's there are pros and cons um, of the, the early partnering versus late partnering versus yeah. versus M and A. Um, so it's an important topic. Yeah, maybe I could pick up a little on on some of that. I think um, clearly, as, as Hun saying, to some extent, the decision whether to partner to uh, to, to license or to do an M and A is, is especially in this environment, I think, more a function of of available alternatives and and not so much a matter entirely of choice. It's not to say that that companies uh, don't have to make these choices in the early stage. But I think in the environment we're in now with early stage companies, the most dominant factor is going to be the issue of financing and access to financing, and not just initial round financing, but trying to plan for further on financing. I think this is a, an issue that early stage companies often don't confront effectively is the, the, is is, is how, how to how to get follow-on financing and, and and how to carry out their plan because getting a single round of financing is almost in, in every case going to be inadequate to take you through the early stages of your plan so i think the question companies have to look is what's going to provide a reliable source of of financing for development and and that's probably the most dominant factor i think in in making that choice uh, but clearly there there are many many opportunities and new structures for partnering um, m and is always, in a sense, everybody's desire because with M&A comes the expectation of a big exit. But the fact is, I think in this environment, we're going to see 